Welcome back to the home lab. I've got an absolutely fascinating experiment to show you today. What we're going to do at home is measure the size of a molecule. So this is an absolutely brilliant experiment and one I've been meaning to show you for quite a long time because I've not seen it done in schools for many, many years and it's quite simple so I don't see why teachers don't do this anymore. Anyway, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and measure the size of a molecule and to do that we're going to use oil and the apparatus is really simple. All we need is a tray of water, some oil and some uh, baby talcum powder and I've got a little tiny bit of wire here um, in a loop and that is going to be used to pick up a tiny amount of oil, a little spherical um, ball of oil and we're going to drop that onto the surface of the water and use a rather clever technique to work out how big a single molecule is. So just before we get started with the experiment, I think you'll understand it better if I very quickly explain what's going on here. I'm going to pick up a little tiny spherical ball of oil on the little bit of wire that I've got, the wire loop. And if we measure the diameter of that little ball, then we can work out its volume. So we imagine it's a sort of sphere shape, four thirds pi r cubed. We've got the volume of the oil we're using. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop that oil onto surface of water. And the idea is it thins out to one molecule thick. Now, if you think about it, it'll be sitting on the water in a sort of circular shape. But of course, it's not just a circle. It's got some thickness as well. So that spherical ball of oil has now turned into a very wide, very thin cylinder of oil on the water. And if we know the volume of the little ball of oil that we put on, we know the volume of the cylinder. The volume of the cylinder will be identical. But we know the diameter of the cylinder, so we can work out its surface area, and then we can use that to work out what the thickness would be to give the same volume as the little ball of oil we put on the water in the first place. So don't worry if that seemed all a bit confusing and mysterious. Let's do the experiment first so you can see how it's done. And then I'll get a piece of paper and draw on it what I've just explained, how we actually find out the size of a molecule of oil. Now, the only other thing you need to know here is because we're using oil, it's a long chain hydrocarbon. And usually with hydrocarbons like that, one end likes water and one end doesn't like water. So we've got a hydrophilic end that sticks to the water and a hydrophobic end that sticks away from the water. So the molecules we think are all gonna stand up on end. So if they stand up on end, in their sort of circular ring or shape of oil on the water, then if we know the thickness of that cylinder, we know the length and therefore the size of one oil molecule. Anyway, enough talk, let's get on with the experiment. So the first thing we need is a tray of water and I've got a fairly deep tray here and the important thing is you put the tray out and let the water surface become completely calm. You don't want any waves going up and down it at all. So we're going to leave it for a moment and wait until the surface becomes completely calm. So the next thing we do is sprinkle on just a little bit of baby talcum powder. Uh, when I used to teach this, it used to be lycopodium powder, uh, but I don't think so many schools have that anymore. And it works perfectly well with talcum powder. So what we want is a very thin layer, not a thick one, of talcum powder on the surface of the water. So now for the fun bit. 
I'm going to pick up a tiny little bit of oil uh, with the wire and what I'm going to do is bring that little tiny ball of oil and put it down just in the centre of the tray and watch what happens when it touches the surface of the water. So as a teacher, I'm always a bit nervous before this stage because I never quite know if it's going to work or it's going to produce some really weird and irregular pattern, which it often does. It's all about getting the surface of the water calm and getting the right amount of talcum powder and perhaps an oil that works well. I'm using gear oil here. So what we need to do next is we need to work out the volume of the oil that we put on the water and we need to work out the diameter of the oil slick that's formed on the tray of water as well. So we now need to take some measurements and this is a typical FJ experiment. I'm not doing things really accurately and precisely. In a school environment uh, you might be asked to do that and you'd need to use um, graticules and vernier microscopes and things like that. But the beauty of this experiment is, can we get an idea of the size of a molecule by basically just using a ruler? So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do is we need to know the volume of our little tiny bit of oil that I've picked up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wire that's used to pick it up against a ruler and look carefully to see what sort of diameter the gap is in the wire. I think it comes out as approximately one millimeter. Remembering we're going to have to work in meters so we don't get all our units confused. So that one millimeter diameter will enable us to work out the volume of the drop of oil we put on. So now what we're going to do is measure the diameter of the oil slick we had on the water in the tray. So again, we're going to do this in a typical FJ way and just use a ruler. And if we use a ruler, we get about 18 centimeters for the diameter of the oil slick on the water in the tray. So now what we need to do is use the measurements that we've made to see if we can estimate the length of one molecule of oil. So now for the calculation. So the first thing you need to remember is that the drop of oil, there it is, okay, probably a bit more spherical than that, um, has the same volume as the oil slick, which is a sort of cylindrical shape, something like this. OK, and if they have the same volume, then we know the volume of the drop because we measured its diameter and therefore its radius. So this is four thirds pi r cubed and the slick will have exactly the same volume. So it's this surface area multiplied by its height. So the surface area of the circle is pi r squared multiplied by the height of the slick, h. Now, if you think about it, we know the radius of the drop. We know 4 thirds pi. We know pi. We know the radius of the slick. And the only thing we don't know is h. So if we put the measurements in and equate these two, we'll get h. And this H should be the length of a molecule of oil. So let's do the volume of the oil drop first. So the oil drop. So uh, its diameter was approximately equal to one millimeter. Now remember, we've got to convert that to meters. And then uh, remember that we're going to do radius. So it's half of this value. So 0.5 millimeters. So the radius of the drop is five times 10 to the minus four meters. Now we know the volume of the drop will be equal to four thirds pi 
r cubed. So let's do some maths. The volume is equal to 4 thirds pi multiplied by the radius cubed. So the radius was 5 times 10 to the minus 4 all cubed. Uh, you might notice that's 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 to the power 3, which is uh, makes life a bit easier. So the volume is equal to 5.2 times 10 to the minus 10 meters cubed. Um, I've probably been a bit naughty here with significant figures, etc. But I'm just showing you the idea. OK, so now let's deal with the volume of the oil slick. Well, we know this is the volume of the oil slick because it came from the drop. So for the slick on the water, the volume is equal to the circle here multiplied by the height. So that's pi r squared h. Now, a little bit careful here. This R is the radius of this circle, not the radius of the oil drop. So perhaps we should have had an R1 and an R2 or something like that. OK, so um, let's now put some numbers in. So 5.2 times 10 to the minus 10 must be equal to pi. So this was 18 centimetres across. So it's uh, nine centimetres, so nine times 10 to the minus two metres squared, multiplied by, the only thing we don't know is the height of the slick, and that's gonna be the length of our molecule. Our molecules will be sort of standing up on end like, um, like this uh, on top of the water surface. So if we solve this for H, we get what we've been trying to do all the way through this experiment. H, or the height of this slick, or the length of one oil molecule, is approximately equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 8 metres. So how does this compare to known values measured in laboratories with rather more technical apparatus than a tray of water and some um, baby powder and oil? Well, X-ray diffraction um, gives the size of, should we say, um, the radius of carbon, so a carbon atom, um, approximately 1 times 10 to the minus 10 metres. Most atoms are, are pretty similar sizes, in fact, um, across their diameter or radius. So uh, we've got 2 times 10 to the minus 8. So uh, just leave the 2 off for a second. It's um, two orders of magnitude bigger. But remember that our molecule um, has got lots of carbon atoms in it. I think it should have about 10 to 20 or 30. We're looking at about 200 extra molecules, but still, I don't think it's particularly bad for an experiment that's done uh, just in the home with very simple apparatus. So just in summary, our oil, I haven't looked up to see uh, what the molecular structure is, uh, but I'm thinking it's probably got about 10 to 50 carbon atoms um, in a chain. So we should be getting um, about 5 times 10 to the minus 9 metres. And we've got 2 times 10 to the minus 8, so we're a, a bit on the large side, but it, it doesn't really matter. Um, we've made loads of estimations here, and certainly my measurement of the drop wasn't very good, let alone the oil slick, which sort of grew and I think was restricted uh, by the walls of the container. But as you know with my experiments, it's the general idea that counts. So we haven't done too badly. And just to end on this little bit, it's worth saying that uh, if you want to measure something very, very small in a laboratory, I always tell my students, magnify it up. So what we've done here is we've taken something that's very, very small, a molecule of oil, and we've kind of magnified up um, the effect that it has by having 
lots of them and then thinning it out on the surface of the water. So there we go, measuring the length of a molecule with very simple apparatus in the home lab. I thought you might be interested to know that um, this experiment was supposedly first done by Benjamin Franklin, one of the uh, founding fathers of America. Uh, when he was travelling back to London, um, he supposedly put some oil on Mount Pond in Clapham Common and noticed that it spread out into a sort of circular uh, ring shape. Um, he didn't take it any further unfortunately. He kind of knew that the molecules or the particles in there which he didn't fully understand were spreading out and probably forming a single layer but he didn't um, then go on to try and measure their actual size. That came rather later. So there we go, 2 times 10 to the minus 8 metres for the height of the oil slick and therefore the length of the molecule of oil. Now uh, one atom is approximately 1 times 10 to the minus 10 metres in diameter, so 10 atoms are about 1 times 10 to the minus 9 metres, 1 nanometer, so uh, maybe our oil molecule contained rather more than just uh, 10 atoms of carbon in the long chain. But anyway, we're within one order of magnitude of the right answer, so I'm pretty happy that with all the estimations we made and the very simple apparatus that we had, that we've had a pretty good shot at measuring the length of an oil molecule. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed that experiment. I do think that all school children should see this and it's also rather fun because you can do it at home as well. Anyway, do stay to the end of the video because I often put some interesting links and things in there and also what I'll do is I'll show you an oil slick that didn't quite work out but it's rather pretty. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon so uh, make sure that you get your notifications on so you hear when that comes out and I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.